Worship leaders and worship keys players, David and Ryan from Sunday Sounds here. Today we're gonna talk about worship keys myths. These are lies, do not believe them. Don't let them stop you from moving forward in the way that you address your keys rig. We're talking specifically to those of you who've decided to pursue setting up a software keys rig. So Ryan, don't believe the lies. How you doing today? Pretty good, how are you? I feel fired up because I don't like lies. I feel <laughs> like I feel like people stop themselves because they heard something once from yeah, like yeah. one person, like an anecdote, like one time my computer grew teeth and it bit my hand while I was playing keys. And so I'm back to the red keyboard. Yeah, so we're gonna do some worship keys rig myth busting today. Don't so. be scared. Don't be scared of the software keys rig. What's myth so, number one? One thing that I've heard a lot is that software is not a reliable way to run a key setup. Um, a lot of people are worried about it crashing on them. Maybe just it just randomly just won't work. You hear like like there, there's gremlins in the wires that only show up on Sunday mornings or whatnot. Wire gremlins. Yeah, we you can have issues of course with a, yeah. any keys rig, but there are definitely things that you can do to make it almost 100% reliable. I've been using a software keys rig for seven, I think years now, and I haven't had a live crash one time that's ever impacted anything in a, in a horrible way. So why do you think this myth ex like holds up? Why do people continue to say that it's not reliable? Yeah, so there's probably a few reasons. One of them is that people jump in really fast into playing live on stage. I did that. Yeah. Without... I used to believe the myth, mm -hmm. right? So, that, I mean, I'm talking to myself here from yeah. a few years ago. Yeah, if you jump in too quick and you haven't tested your rig, you don't know how it performs, you don't know the limitations, you can easily cause uh, just things to go south pretty quick. So as long as you spent time testing it at home, you know how to troubleshoot basic things, you know how to hook everything up correctly, you should be set to go. I think sometimes people underestimate how much time it takes to just initially work out the kinks and the bugs, because they're there. Right, I mean, it, it might take a little more work up front than a hardware rig where you just plug it in and you're good to go. Mm -hmm. uh, but you get a lot of benefit and flexibility and expandability and all sorts of new sounds. I think it's worth the extra work up front. I think people buy into this myth that it's not reliable because they haven't given themselves time to make it yeah. reliable. So that's the first myth and I think that's a good one. You stole my myth. Sorry. <laughs> because that, that's when I believed. It's here's one of the biggest myths. Here's the second one. I never believed this myth, but I hear people say it all the time. It's actually more expensive to set up a software rig than it is to buy a hardware keyboard with built-in sounds. Now, okay, like to be honest, like that depends on what your goals are and what your budget is. And like, I mean, yes, you could find a Casio keyboard with built-in sounds and that would be less expensive than setting up a software yeah. rig. But you're not getting the red keyboard for less yeah. than the software keys mm -hmm. rig. Now there's a lot of variables here, like if you already own a computer that can run software and you use it for your work in general or whatever, then like that's the majority of the cost. So mm -hmm. that's already something you have, then you can get in the door for pretty cheap. Main stage is 30 bucks if you have a keyboard that's 30 years or less old, you can use it as a controller, and you're good to go. Yeah. $30, that's how I started. Uh, I had a Mac, I had an old keyboard with cheesy built-in sounds with a MIDI port, and then I bought MainStage, and I yeah. used it that Sunday. So I got in the door for $30. One of the things I think worship leaders and keys players get caught up the most when they think about price is if you don't already own a computer, then that's a bigger financial investment. If you've already got a laptop, you're probably good to go, but if you don't have one, then yeah, that's a bigger expense. But I don't think that that makes it more expensive than a hardware keyboard solution, especially if you're willing to go uh, used. I think people sometimes think they have to have the, the newest and most powerful computer available because of myth number one. They're worried about the rig not being reliable. Mm -hmm. But the truth is you don't always need the most powerful newest computer. I mean, I started out on an old computer and I, I ran it for several years. You did the same. I started out on an older computer as well. And the good thing about computers is that since they're always coming out with new models, you can find all sorts of different used options out there. I think that the used computer market, especially for folks just getting started with MainStage or Ableton, is almost always what I tell people to do, unless they want something that's gonna last them 
seven, eight, nine years, yep. um, you can you can save a lot of money in the used market for sure. So how can people figure out like what they actually need to worry about when they're picking a computer? Yeah, so we actually have a resource and it's linked below in the description. And it's a full write-up that we did on everything that you need to consider when purchasing a computer. We have links that can show you where to buy in the used market, or if you're into a new computer, you can just find out all the specs that you need to run a reliable main stage keys rig. So we've also got resources that we'll link in the description that will help you understand the things that actually move the needle and make a difference in how reliable your keys rig is. So if you're new to software, whether you're using MainStage, Ableton, or something else, we'll have some resources linked in the description that will help you cut through all of the talk and figure out what actually makes a difference. Leave a comment and let us know if you've heard these keysmiths or if you've heard other keysmiths that you'd like us to address. I think we should just start a, a spin-off YouTube channel where we just do like myth busters, but for worship musicians. I like it. Worship busters? That's a terrible name. We'll work on it, we'll flesh it out, and then we'll come back with a rebranded YouTube channel. Until then, to make sure you don't miss it, just subscribe so you can see our future videos. Thanks for hanging out. Go bust some myths.